today in this very special episode of Me, I am going to explain the differences between several different types of radios. Those radios being Ham radio MERS radios FRS radios GMRS radios and LMR or business type radios. I will not be talking about CB radios because everyone already knows what those are. And I will not be talking about 900 megahertz radios because those are lame and nobody uses those for long range or high FARS communications. But first, allow me to point out that many sharp eyed viewers may notice and will probably complain that there are already 1 million videos on YouTube explaining the differences between all of these different types of radios. But allow me to point out why my video is different from those other 9,999 videos. In my video, which is the very video that you are watching right now at this current moment, in my video, I will not beg you to subscribe and I will not waste your time trying to teach you what the bell does as if you're some sort of a moron. My video will not bore you to death and my video will include LMR or business type radios as part of the comparison. This video featuring me with talent on loan from Xenu is the first video ever in the history of YouTube to compare all the different types of radios, including LMR or business type radios. So let's get into it. Don't you hate those YouTubers that pretend to be all happy and enthusiastic? First on the list is Ham Radio. Ham Radio. This is a UV5R ham radio manufactured by Baofeng. This radio is known around the world by ham radio operators as the best ham radio ever invented by humans. You do not need a license to buy a ham radio or to listen to a ham radio, but you do need a ham radio operator's license if you're going to transmit, if you're going to press that button. And to get that license, you must pay and you must take a test. The ham radio test is a 35 question multiple choice test. And to pass the test, you only have to answer 26 of the questions correctly. According to many happy hams, even a nine-year-old can pass the ham radio test. Paradoxically, however, according to the way many sad hams behave online, once you pass that test that any nine-year-old could pass, it's like having a PhD. Most ham radios are locked, meaning that they can only transmit on the FCC assigned ham radio frequencies. However, some radios, like this UV5R, which is made in China, where they give exactly zero fucks about the FCC, some of these Chinese radios are not locked or are very easily unlockable, allowing you to transmit on other frequencies outside of the ham bands, such as MERS, FRS, GMRS, and even some LMR frequencies. However, doing this makes the FCC very sad. With a ham radio and a ham radio operator's license, you cannot use ham radios or ham radio frequencies for business or commercial purposes. And according to the FCC rules, specifically part 97.113, encrypting ham radio transmissions for the purpose of preventing others from knowing what you are talking about is not permitted for normal chit chat over the air. That means that ham radio is not private. Now, normally this is where I would make fun of some people that also have a ham license, but I'm not going to do that in this video because I do not need to. And that is because one or two of them will no doubt come along and leave a comment proving everything that I've ever said about them. So when this happens, I will just pin that comment to the top of the comments list for everyone to see and make fun of. So be sure you check back in a few days so you don't miss it. Next on the list is MERS. MERS, M-U-R-S, which stands for Multi-Use Radio Service. And no license is required to transmit on a MERS 
Radio. MERS radios have only five channels, and they are all in the 151 to 154 megahertz range. Although you don't have to worry about the frequencies because they're channelized, so you only have to worry about channels one through five. MERS radios are limited to outputting only two watts, and modern MERS radios are not repeater capable. However, MERS radios are allowed to have removable antennas so that you may connect to a larger antenna, such as an antenna that you can put on the top of your car or even on the roof of your house. And this will greatly extend the FARs of a MERS radio. As I mentioned, you can put an antenna, a big antenna on your house, as long as that antenna does not reach any higher than 60 feet above the ground. The FCC does allow you to use MERS radios for business or commercial purposes, and you can use MERS to transmit data any data, as long as that data is not encrypted or ciphered in any way. That means that with MERS, there is no privacy. Next, we have FRS, which stands for Family Radio Service. These radios are often called bubble pack radios or toys by some people. They are referred to as bubble pack radios because these are the type of radios that you find at Walmart in bubble pack type packaging. They're the ones that say nine mile or 10 mile range on the box, even though you would never ever get that many FARs on one of these radios. FRS requires no license to transmit on, even though the 22 channels that FRS radios use are the exact same frequencies as the basic 22 GMRS channels. And the reason you can talk on those frequencies using one of these radios without a license is because FRS radios are limited to a maximum output of only two watts. And an FRS radio must have a fixed, non-removable... <coughs> can't remove it. Must have a fixed, non-removable antenna which means that you cannot connect to a larger antenna to increase your FARs. Allow me to clear up one point of confusion that the experts online get wrong all the time. If you have a GMRS license, which if you recall, GMRS uses the same frequencies as FRS. If you have a GMRS license and you are talking on a modern FRS radio, such as this one, you do not need to announce your GMRS call sign because you are transmitting from an FRS radio and nobody, including most importantly the FCC, nobody cares about your GMRS license when you're transmitting from an FRS radio. FRS radios are not repeater capable, but using an FRS radio, you can listen to GMRS repeaters because of how GMRS repeaters work. You can legally use FRS radios for business or commercial use, but FRS is not private and encryption of any kind is not permitted. Next on the list is GMRS, which stands for General Mobile Radio Service. You must have a GMRS license to talk on a GMRS radio to get the GMRS license, there is no test. You just buy the license just like you buy a fishing license. The license costs $35 and covers you and your entire family for 10 years. If someone in your family wants to use your license, they just use your call sign the exact same way that you do. If you do not know how to purchase your GMRS license, check the information section below. There will be a link to my website with step-by-step -step instructions, including pictures on how to buy your GMRS license. You can use GMRS radios for business or commercial purposes. However, the FCC does not issue GMRS licenses to business entities, only people. So if you were using GMRS radios in your business environment, everyone using one of the radios would have to have their own call sign. GMRS radios may transmit up to 50 watts, and GMRS antennas are removable so that you can put on a better antenna or even put a large antenna on your roof. This means that a GMRS radio can have many, many FARs. And on GMRS, you can also use repeaters, which you cannot do on FRS or MERS, which will give you even more FARs. Now, just a moment ago, I mentioned that a GMRS radio can have a removable antenna. 
or you can connect to a larger antenna. But that is only, only if the radio cannot transmit data and only if the radio meets specific RF emission standards set by the FCC. For example, this BTEC GMRS Pro is capable of transmitting data, so according to the FCC, it may not have a removable antenna. So what I am saying is you may find some GMRS radios with non-removable antennas. Contrary to popular online opinion, a GMRS radio with a non-removable antenna does not does not make it an FRS radio. It is still a GMRS radio and you still need a license. As I mentioned just a moment ago, GMRS radios are permitted by the FCCs to transmit some data, but according to the FCC rules, specifically part 95.1731 subparagraph D, according to that rule, GMRS handheld portable units may only transmit digital data containing location information or requesting location information from one or more other GMRS or FRS units or containing a brief text message to another specific GMRS or FRS unit. And according to FCC rules part 95.1787 subparagraph A sections 2 and 3, digital transmissions must not exceed one second in duration, and digital data transmissions must not be sent more frequently than every 30 seconds, except that a GMRS unit may automatically respond to more than one interrogation request received within a 30 second period. Thank you to the FCC overlords for clearing that up. As previously mentioned, if transmitting on a GMRS radio, you must have a GMRS license. Even if transmitting in narrowband, and even if transmitting at a lower power level like on FRS radios, and even if the antenna cannot be removed, regardless of what the online experts may tell you. GMRS is not private, even when using privacy codes or tones. No encryption of any kind is permitted on GMRS, and privacy codes and tones are not private in any way regardless of what the box tries to fool you into thinking. And finally, we get into LMR radios, sometimes known as PLMR or private land mobile radios, or simply a business type radio. Although not only businesses use this type of radio and radio service, many public government and safety agencies use this service and this type of radios. This particular radio, used to belong to a police department here in Southern California. To use an LMR radio on LMR frequencies, you must have an LMR or FCC business type license. And that license will specify what frequencies you are allowed to use. And once assigned by the FCC, that frequency is your frequency and nobody else in your geographic area can use that frequency unless they have your permission and you list them on your business license. Anyone can get an FCC business license and their own frequency to use as long as you are running a business or doing some kind of commercial or educational or medical or philanthropic activities or religious activities, such as running the parking lot at your church. To get an FCC business license, you simply fill out FCC form number 601 which is 28 pages long, and then you pay several hundred dollars. You pay more if you plan to use a repeater for your business enterprise. There is no preset power limit when operating under a FCC business license. However, when you get the license, the FCC may tell you that because of where you are located, you're limited to only a few hundred or a few thousand watts to prevent any interference with your neighbors. With LMR radios, there are no antenna restrictions, and you can use any FCC Part 90 approved radio. Those are the type of radios that you find on Amazon that are usually listed as high-powered business radios, used police and fire department radios such as this Motorola XTS 5000, are also usually business or LMR type radios. When operating your LMR radio under a business type license, you can transmit pretty much anything you want, 
analog, digital data, DMR, P25, and you can encrypt your transmissions however you see fit, so everything can be completely private. These type radios are not FCC approved for use on ham, MERS, FRS, or GMRS frequencies, but most of these radios are fully capable of actually transmitting on those frequencies, and many people use them for that. However, according to the FCC enforcement database, the FCC does not care, as since the year 2012, they have not gone after anyone for simply using a non-type accepted radio on ham or GMRS or FRS or MERS. Now, of course, the most important thing to remember when using any type of radio is that no matter what, wherever you